Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I am going to try my absolute hardest to make this a short, concise review of a camera that many will argue deserves much more time, while others will argue it deserves no time at all. I'm talking about Fuji's digital medium format, GFX50S. Now, if you love what medium format can do, even in this digital era, if your clients or your own standards and sensibilities can see the subtle but very real differences created by a larger sensor with that many megapixels, more refined color signs, and the different perspective that longer lenses for a given field of view provide, you'll likely fall into the former camp. If you're into high-performance full-frame cameras because you need state-of-the-art autofocus performance, the highest frame rates, outstanding 4K video, and in-body image stabilization, heck, any stabilization, IBIS lens or gimbal, then you'll likely fall into the latter camp. Either of which is fine. But for me, a crop sensor guy, after selling off my Canon 5D2 and a pile of L glass a few years ago. Now, very much a Sony APS-C and Panasonic Micro Four Thirds fan. I love the X-T2. Even though we keep edging closer to a Sony A7 III, and if money and weight were no object, and they had primes, a lot of them, maybe a Leica SL, there's another way to think about the GFX 50S altogether. And that's this. Much to my surprise, even with its butt-ugly, crisp angle-esque rump, meaningless to me 7 extra megapixels compared to a Sony a7R III or an Icon D850, and no extra megapixels compared to a Canon 5DR, unnaturally crippled rear screen articulation, far too much system weight, though the body is surprisingly light, relatively speaking by itself, fairly low ISO top end at 12,800, no IBIS, minimal, well-buried video capabilities, as in no 4K, 1080 at 30 frames per second only, no full-size HDMI port, no headphone jack, no microphone jack. Uh, okay, I got carried away. Of course it has headphone and microphone jacks. And the pair of, what were they thinking, suboptimal camera strap attachment clips, the GFX 50S is a compelling piece of kit to me. That's because, one, I love the film simulations, hold that thought. Two, I love Fuji's manual of arms, the top dials for shutter speed and ISO, combined with a real aperture ring on the lens itself, and the way you can switch modes without ever even turning on the camera in the first place, like the X-T2 from which it derives and which I fell in love with, as I just said. I'll put a link uh, down below and up above to the review I did of it. Make it the most physically intuitive camera out there. Once again, for me, your mileage may vary, except for the X-T2 itself. Three, I love the 110 millimeter F2 and 23 millimeter F4 Fuji lenses. They are sharp, contrasty, tasty, beautifully built, and render color wonderfully, though I hardly shot any color. Knowing Fuji glasses I do, I expect that their other GF primes to be no less noteworthy. Probably true for their zoom, though I'm generally not a zoom kind of guy. Four, I love the fact that Fuji makes a tilting adapter for the EVF so that you can angle it up to 90 degrees, though I do wish it would come bundled with the body and that they didn't charge extra for it. Five, not that I love it, I don't, but I really, really like the grip. It's the best I've ever used on a camera full stop. Well, that surprised me. In the end, I love the imagery that comes out of it. And I love, love, love the idea that you don't need to tweak the camera as soon as you take it out of the box. If you're a photographer, you pretty much just start shooting with it. Yes, the AF is slow and not particularly steady. Yes, the lenses omit the dual position focusing ring that allows you to pull back and switch to a much more natural manual focus feel and provides hard stops at infinity and minimum focusing distance, the way the Fuji 16mm f1.4 for the X-T2 does. Yes, the body alone is almost seven grand. And no, the software UI doesn't hold a candle to Hasselblad's, nor is it touch controlled. And now that I mention it, if you haven't already done so, you should probably check out my series on Hasselblad's X1D for a number of reasons, including an answer to the question, what does medium format even mean in 2018? But 
of the medium format cameras I have gone hands-on with. Which for purposes of this review, let's agree to define as having sensors larger than full frame and equal to or smaller than the traditional film format of 6x6. After all, I did name the Sony a7R III my 2017 air quotes medium format camera of the year. I'm surprised to say that the GFX 50S is by far the most approachable, both in terms of usability and price. It's the one that whispered to me, forget I'm medium format, just pick me up, take me outside and shoot. Yeah, baby, handheld, no tripod, no safety net, do it, do it. As I did in the opening sequence. I threw the GFX 50S with the 110 F2 and 23 F4 into a small messenger bag to do quick environmental portraits of several Pennsylvania residents fighting the uh, Mariner East pipeline. A day or two later, I threw the same kit into a small backpack and took it up to New York for a press event with Claudia uh, at the International Center of Photography Museum, ahead of four new exhibitions now open, including retrospectives on Henri Cartier-Bresson and Elliot Irwin. Just, you gotta go, guys. You gotta go. You'll notice I used it as a stills camera. I'm not going to talk about video performance because, really, there's no point. The GFX 50S is not a hybrid camera so much as a stills camera that, like the Hasselblad X1D, happens to have a video option not meant for serious use yet. Although, yeah, you know the punchline. I'm filming this on the GFX 50S Full HD, so there's that. Did I say I loved the glass? But as I look back on my time with it, two things really hit me. I had no problem treating the GFX 50S as I would a full frame or even crop sensor camera. And I could use the exact same Acros simulation as I did on the X-T2, which I love, 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 love. Captured as a JPEG, ready to go with the full color RAW file right there as well. Now, of course, the GFX 50S is not the only camera that can do this. I mean, if you're watching this channel, you know pretty much any camera you can think of has RAW plus JPEG shooting capability. But in the GFX 50S with its film emulations, I think this capability finds its highest form. Straight out of the camera, these images look gorgeous to my eye. If I want to futz around and post, the full richness of which that sensor is capable is right there, ready to go. But you don't have to. And I don't like to. Then again, as I was reminded at that press event, I'm in good company. Once beyond the 1930s, Cartier-Bresson didn't like to either. He didn't have to. And he didn't. By the way, our interview with director of the Henri Cartier-Bresson Foundation, Agnès Sir, is already up. And interviews with ICP Executive Director Mark Lubell and living legend photographer Elliot Erwitt are coming soon. So, yes, this is what you need to do. Hit that little alarm bell reminder next to subscribe down below so you'll know when they're published. Back to the GFX 50S. Two other things uh, stood out to me about the camera. First, when you think about it, composing a shot for color is fundamentally different than composing for black and white, right? I mean, yeah. So maybe the more apt scenario is not shooting on Acros, but shooting with one of Fuji's other film emulations, like Velvia, also I put as a JPEG, and still have the underlying RAW file should one feel the need. Second, because the depth of field is so shallow for a given focal length, I found myself often stopping down a bit. And when combined with the absence of IBIS, or lens stabilization, the net effect is that I typically shot at a higher ISO than I would with full frame or crop sensor cameras. What this means paradoxically is that there will be, if you do my kind of shooting, times when the natural high ISO image quality advantage of the GFX 50S's larger pixel pitch sensor will be offset by the lack of stabilization. I did try attaching my old Canon Speedlight manual mode for some what I thought would be interesting outdoor shots, but I didn't get that to work. I, I blame myself for that, so yeah. That's it, really. Bottom line, again, despite my preconceived notions, I love the output. I love how the camera works physically, except for the trash and play buttons located awkwardly on that butt-ugly rump. And it's a relative bargain in the digital medium format world. 
the lenses, the autofocus is loud. The remote app wasn't bad, though if you want to use touch focus, you have to do that in camera mode, not video mode. And that's when I learned there's a slight crop for video. And the white balance in the app doesn't work very well, but I am not talking about video on the GFX 50S anymore. That's it. So, would I buy a GFX 50S? Well, no, but I'm not the target. Even though it's smaller than my Canon 1D, and significantly lighter too, my expectations have evolved. I like tiny. For what I do, the GFX 50S is simultaneously more than I need and less. I also rely on stellar IBIS now, outstanding 4K video. If I needed the megapixels, I'd get the Sony a7R 3 If I needed stellar AF without the megapixels, I'd get the Sony a7 III, especially as I'm already invested in the Sony ecosystem. And if I didn't need either of those, I'd get the GH5, which I own. And while the GFX 50S has an excellent 3.7 megapixel EVF, so does the a7R 3 the A9, as do the Panasonic GH5, GH5S, and G9, let alone the Leica SL with its even larger, brilliant 4.4 megapixel iRes EVF. Then again, the GFX 50S's most natural competitor is Hasselblad's X1D, the other Sony-censored 50 megapixel digital medium format mirrorless camera out there. While the X1D is a more modern concept, dramatically more elegant in its design, I think, and graced with the best software UI in the business, bar none, the X1D's lack of an articulated screen, the lower resolution EVF, the fact that its EVF is not articulated, that its primes are slower, that it has no zooms, for those of you who don't mind the extra weight, and that it has had its fair share of early teething problems. From where I sit, the GFX 50S is a more mature product and product line. I'd say that if you're already a traditional medium format shooter looking to go mirrorless, but enjoy the size, shape, and heft of that form factor, and don't have a ton invested in another system's glass, the Fujifilm GFX 50S deserves a very, very close look. Really, it's just world class. I'm sorry that the GFX 50S has to go back. Big shout out to the folks at Fujifilm for letting me play with the gear for, once again, far too long. I, I think maybe the industry is coming to recognize how slow I am to wrap my head around things. And the fact that Fuji and others are being so gracious about it is really, well, it's just really nice. So thank you guys. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.